Hey, I'm Alexander White, and today I want to talk to you about parallel mix bus compression. So what I'm working on here is an unmixed track, so the tracks that you're going to hear are just as they were recorded with no processing, except for one thing, which is parallel mix bus compression. So let me play the track. I'm going to play you for every two bars, I'm going to bring in and out the mix bus compression. And I want you to have a listen to see if you can hear the texture and the energy and the density that it adds to the track. So first of all, we'll start off with no mix bus compression. Here we go. So it's really fun. It adds a little bit of energy, a little bit of density. It does also add some volume. But in a minute, I'm actually going to show you how you can do parallel mix bus compression without going to the trouble of also having it louder. There are reasons why you do it like I've done it here, where you put it on its own track. And there are reasons why you do it the other way, where you can really hear the tonal difference and the changes it's making without the volume increase. So let me show you what I've done. So first of all, uh, over here, we have on my mixer, my mix comp. And if I bring up this display, this is the system that I'm using for mixing most of the time um, called it's soft tubes console one. And you can see there's the compressor section. You can actually see it sort of dipping in and out there. I'm going to play the track again and I'm going to leave it in and I want you to just have a little look towards the top here at this meter because you'll see just how much compression we're getting whilst the track is playing. Here we go. So it's tons. And actually often with mix bus compression, parallel mix bus compression, you'll actually go even more than that. So let's just have a quick look at how it sounds on its own, because that's really key. That's something that is very important to understanding what you're trying to achieve with parallel mix bus compression. So let's just quickly press these buttons here on the bus tracks, that's the drum bus, the acoustic guitar bus, and the synth bus. And, oh, you know what? Let me quickly talk about signal flow. So what's happening in the mix is we have the drums here, kick, snare, overhead, brilliant. They're routing to the drum bus. The drum bus is then routing out to the main, which is my main mix bus. That is where I have just a normal compressor, just slightly tapping at the music, just to give us a sense of glue. But also what I have is this little bus is sending the whole signal, a copy of the signal to my mix comp, my parallel mix bus compression. And that's happening exactly the same with my acoustic guitar bus and my synth bus. So it means that the whole of my mix is routing, at least the things that are being delivered to these buses, are routing to my mix compressor here. So now that we're in this mode, we can actually have a listen to the mix bus compression on its own. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit because it was kind of, a, it was blended in at about minus eight, but I'm going to turn it up to just zero decibels and we can have a little listen to what it actually sounds like just on its own. Can you hear, hear how it's quite crushed? That's the idea. What we're doing with parallel mix bus compression, it's also sometimes people also call it things like upward compression. 
uh, and what they're really meaning is what you're doing is you're crushing the transients you're crushing all the 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 peaky spiky stuff with a compressor and you're just creating sort of this block of sound that then you feed back into the original signal which is left relatively uncompressed and what this does is it creates this sense of density and support it makes sounds seem like they're not falling away it's a really excellent way of getting a track to sound more powerful and more punchy without crushing everything to death with compression actually on the channels themselves and constant downward compression as we call it so the way i work is i first of all i do this i listen to the compression um all all on its own and i just find a setting that works if i open the screen again you can see the attack time changing there you can see the release time changing the threshold it doesn't matter i'm going to set it all up to well let's go for um you know some sort of moderate release attack time fully open let's set the threshold to that so this is how i go about thinking about it what i want to do is i want to get something that sounds quite energetic without going really crazy let's have a little listen So, you know, I'm not even worrying about things like, is my release time in time with the track? I'm not worrying about where my attack time is. It, it could be five milliseconds, it could be 30 milliseconds. It's not the point. It's not the thing to worry about. What you're looking for is a sound that th then makes the track sound really condensed, as crushed as possible, and sometimes even getting some of that compression, um, compression distortion that you heard coming into the mix when I really crank the controls, super fast attack, super fast release, threshold all the way in, and it was kind of creating a distorted sounding track almost. That's compression distortion and that's the way that sort of sounds. So once I've kind of gone, yeah, that's kind of cool, that sounds quite crushed, I'll then blend it back into the original track. So let's just do that. We'll unsolo all of the tracks and unmute the buses that I had to mute to be able to hear the mix bus comp compression all on its own. So let's just blend this in. So you can see my fader moving around there. I'm going to fade this in and we're going to have a listen and see when we think we've contributed to the track in a really fun density, kind of thick, kind of exciting sort of way. Here we go. So what are we at there? Right, okay, this time it's minus 12.8. I'm not looking at all at what the meter is saying. I'm only using my ears to judge this. That's key with parallel mix bus compression or any parallel compression at all, to be honest. You have to set that game with your ears and listen to how it's affecting What's happening with the bass? Is the bass becoming more glued to the rest of the track? What's happening to the treble? Is it getting smoothed over in a pleasant way or is it getting too dark? All these things are things that you must think about when you're adding in any sort of parallel mix bus compression or any parallel compression at all. So this is a phenomenal extra tool. Once you've done that main compression and you've set up your 
just your standard mix bus compressor, this one here, which is just the thing that everything routes through, try setting up a parallel mix bus compressor. So you're kind of tucking the track down on the top and then you're kind of bringing up energy on the bottom. So you're creating this solid base for the for all of your music to sit on and you're controlling the nasty peaks on the top just with two processors and you haven't even started mixing on tracks yet and things are already sounding better. One challenge that you do get is parallel mix bus compression or many many versions of parallel compression done in this way make the track louder because you're adding volume. There is a way that you can avoid this although there are drawbacks. So, of course, if I have this track here, if I open up my display of the plugin again, if you see I've turned on my EQ, what's great about this is I could EQ just the parallel mix bus compression. I could just make it darker or brighter. I could roll some low end off if I thought it was con contributing badly in, in that way in just one area, but I loved what it was doing to the top end of the mix. I could add some drive, chorus, reverb, all of these things you can do when it's on its own channel. But perhaps what can be helpful is, uh, helpful is at least start off by actually doing the parallel mix bus compression on the main channel. So if we mute our particular mix compression channel and go over to the main channel. So this is where everything's rooting through. So let's play it again, just for the reminder. By the way, you can really see that meter on this mix bus compressor, the normal one, not the parallel one, just the normal one, is hardly moving. Just check it out. We're only getting a smidgen of control on, on the main compressor. So if I open up my display again, what you'll see is at the moment at the top here, it says 20 main. That's because it's track 20 and it's the main channel. So what we can do is I can go over to, as you can see, it's changed to 19 mix comp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy just the compressor, so the compressor of mix comp 19 will be copied, select the tracks, I want to copy it to 20. All right, cool. So now if we go to 20, you'll see that the compressor is now exactly the same settings as our mix, parallel mix compressor was. So now if we play this track, what we're gonna hear is all that crazy compression. And you can hear how it's just too much. It just sounds too aggressive and it's creating distortions and unpleasant artifacts when it's the only thing we're hearing. Just here, you can see that I've got a parallel control. So I can decide how much fully wet or fully dry. And what I'm gonna do is start off with it totally open so we're going to hear the complete compression and then I'm going to slowly move it over to just just the dry signal and we're going to see as I move it over if you can hear what happens to the mix slowly you'll notice that the kick and the snare start to come unglued from the mix very similar to how mix standard mix bus compression works but you will also hear the guitars and things change texture the balances will shift again so let's have a listen So 
I've landed on about 60%. So that is, we have currently got uh, six, 60% is the dry signal because we're 60% towards the dry. So we've got about 40% of the compressed signal in there. You might have noticed me switching on and off the compressor as well, just so I can really hear what's actually happening. And we'll go through it again. And snares are so easy to hear with this kind of thing. But do listen to the other instruments as well and how they interact, because the whole thing now just sounds a little bit denser, a little bit bigger, a little bit more controlled and a little bit more like a record. So let's have a little listen. Here we go. And I think we could even go as far as 50% if you wanted an even more aggressive sound. Parallel mix compression is a wonderful tool and something I use alongside my main mix bus compressor. So now we've got, as I mentioned earlier, that roof coming down. You've got that safety net coming up from the bottom to just make sure that the track never comes unstuck. You've, you never lose instruments too much and instruments don't gain too much. This is one small piece of a very, very big puzzle with mixing. But it's absolutely wonderful to start off with it because you'll find very much like mix bus compression makes setting the faders easier. This also makes setting the faders much easier. What I will do is I will usually set my mix bus compressor up, set my main compressor up, and then I might, depending on how I'm feeling, go back and take all the faders down and then rebalance my entire track into those two processes. Because the way that you then change where things are balanced, you will sometimes find you come out with an even better sounding mix. So I hope that was super helpful. Let me know how you find parallel mix bus compression in conjunction with main mix bus, uh, main mix bus compression. Gosh, that's a lot of mix buses and parallel mix buses and good Lord compression. I've said the word compression too often. Okay, now it doesn't even have any meaning. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you enjoy using this technique. Let me know how you find the difference between, like I showed you doing it actually on the channel and doing parallel wet and dry into, uh, just after the compressor versus actually having a, an individual channel which you blend into and let me know if you find any fun uses for that mix bus parallel mix bus compressor channel if you try to adjust its tone as well maybe you eq it differently there's loads and loads of exciting options thank you so much for hanging out with me again uh as always i hope you got tons out of this video just hit me up if you have any questions and i hope you have a lovely day